how do we know things? How do we know what we know? It's called epistemology. It's an epistemological question. How do we know God? Basically, it was the question that they were debating on the one hand. The other question was uh, this distinction between God and his energies. We say God is uncreated, and everything else is created. We're all creatures. The whole universe is a creation. God is the only uncreated. And what Gregory was putting forth was the orthodox teaching that in God, who is uncreated, we have his essence, which is the part that none of us can know. Let's just put it that way. Uh, and we have his energies, his uncreated energies, both of which are God. Very confusing, you're not supposed to understand that yet. So the basic idea is uh, really rough analogy. I am a human being. My essence of me is something that you can't experience, even I can't experience. How do you experience me? Well, I'm up here talking to you, right? Or you can see me moving, or you can see me in general, all these kinds of things. That would be sort of the inner part, the secret part of each one of us that no one sees. We can think of that as our essence. And our energies are the, 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 the presentation of that essence. The, so if Matthewness is the essence, while they're moving around and talking and you hearing what I'm like and getting a bit of my personality, that's my energy sort of manifesting who I am. Sort of complicated. The, the, they got into this complicated discussion about this, about God. Now why is this important? Sim simplified. It's important because the church teaches God in his essence is completely beyond us and unknowable. But we can know God by how he acts and how he presents himself and how he interacts with the world, we might say, and, and to us. And what Varlam wanted to say was uh, that what Gregory wanted to call the voice of God, we might say, and say, no, it's actually God. These, his uncreated energies are actually God. Varlam wanted to say, well, no, they're more like a telephone that, that convey God, but they're creatures. And the, the, the problem with that is, for Gregory, for the whole Orthodox tradition is, um, if I've only ever talked to you over the phone, I never actually encounter you. We never actually meet. Like, fundamentally, there's a problem here. And that's what Gregory was saying. If we are really going to have union with God, if human salvation is possible, which is uh, uh, for, for a, a human being to become united with God, really united with God, then we actually have to be able to touch God. We can't touch his essence. And if you're saying we can't touch his voice or his energies or whatever as well, then there is no touching God. We're only touching creatures, and therefore there is no real union with God, and therefore salvation actually isn't possible, is what Gregory is saying. The other point they debated about was, how is God known? Varlam says, if you study, you study the natural world, and you just do studies in general, then you can have a certain kind of knowledge of God. That all knowledge is sort of on one spectrum. And Gregory says, uh-uh, that is not orthodox. For orthodox, there's two, two kinds of knowledge, you might say. Knowledge of created things, knowledge of the universe, which we might call natural sciences, right? Or even uh, psychology, all, the, all of the things that have to do with what we deal with every day. But he says the actual knowledge of God isn't something that a human being can climb up to. It requires God to say, here's who I am, and reveal himself. It's God down as opposed to a human being up, if that kind of makes sense. And so, but the way God reveals himself to a human being is primarily to the human heart. And in order to have that revelation take place and to experience that, we have to clean out all of the muck. We have to make room for God to come into us, uh, which requires purity. So, all that to say, the way a person knows God within orthodoxy is, you actually live the spiritual life. And by living the spiritual life, uh, you will begin to be filled up with God. And so when you know God, it will be by actually uh, communing with Him. I mean, being as, as close to God as your own heart is close to your, the rest of your body, basically. Um, as opposed to God forever staying a piece of knowledge. 
out here. He's over here, and maybe he exists, or maybe he doesn't, and maybe we know this about him, and maybe we don't. And Gregory's whole point was to say, no, God can be known, and this kind of knowledge is actually a certain knowledge. Because when you experience the living God, the saints of the church are very clear, you, you can't even doubt it. It's like doubting your own existence. Uh, for whatever, however it works, I've not experienced it in that kind of way, uh, to be able to explain it to you, and it's beyond explication anyway. Basically, I'll say, come and see. Uh, go and do. Right? Go and do likewise, and then you'll understand. Follow the commandments, which are manifestation of Christ, and you'll learn all these things, and you can come back and tell me about them, because you'll learn them by experience. So that's what Gregory was trying to safeguard against Varlam, was to keep the faith from becoming a bunch of old, you know, moldy old theologians sitting around a table discussing ideas. Uh -uh. It's rooted in the spiritual life and in experience. And that means it's possible for all of us. Some of us will ascend to the heights, some of us won't. That's why the simple monk or the simple, you know, grandmother, you know, she may become a God bearer, she may become one of these great saints even if she's not a, a, a theologian in the classical sense of the way we use it today.